Hello guys, welcome to H2O, the A to Z of chemistry. I am Dr. Ritu Johar, your educator for this course on general organic chemistry and I hope you are enjoying this course with me. So today we will be beginning with GOC part 2 lecture number 7 but make sure you watch the previous ones before being this one. In GOC part 1, we have had a detailed discussion on the nomenclature of organic compounds and in GOC part 2, we are discussing the isomerism for organic compounds. So what have we discussed in the first six lectures so far? Well, first of all, we discussed what is isomerism. So I hope you all now know that it is a phenomenon where we will be having compounds having the same molecular formula, but there is going to be a difference in their properties. It can be physical properties alone. It can be chemical properties. It can be both of them, but they will be having a difference in their properties, right? Now, then after that, what did we learn? We learned about the various types of isomerism and the various types we have two broad classification. One is structural isomerism and the other is stereoisomerism. So the first five lectures, they were dedicated to the study of structural isomerism. And in the last lecture, we started with a discussion on stereoisomerism. So now what is stereoisomerism? Well, stereoisomerism is again isomerism. So it is going to be again compounds having the same molecular formula, but now along with that there is going to be a similar structural formula as well the difference is going to be in the spatial arrangement of the atoms and then we discuss various types of uh, stereoisomerism and among them we are now having a detailed discussion on geometrical isomerism Right. So we will be quickly revising what we learned in the last lecture related to geometrical isomerism. And then we will be seeing geometrical isomerism in cycloalkanes, cycloalkenes, alenes, biphenyls and spirocyclic compounds. So it's going to be a very important discussion. And as you have seen it in the previous lecture as well, that we understood each and everything with the help of models. So here also we will be seeing everything with the models so that you have a proper understanding of each and every concept. So let us begin the learning. So well, what I want to revise with you before I begin today's lecture is the conditions for geometrical isomerism because this is going to be very important for building up our today's lecture as well. So the first condition that you learned in the last lecture was that the molecules, they must have a restricted rotation. And the restricted rotation, you saw it in the case of a double bond. Be it a carbon-carbon double bond, as you saw in the cis-trans isomerism, then you even learned the EZ system of nomenclature for that. And then we learned the carbon-nitrogen double bond. We saw the geometrical isomerism in the LDOC signs and the ketox signs. And then we even saw the nitrogen-nitrogen double bond there also benzenes they are having geometrical isomerism. So the essential condition was that we should have a restricted rotation, right? If there is a restricted rotation and if we have to the carbon atoms different groups attached, well such a structure is going to show geometrical isomerism. But now I'm going to add one more condition over here and that condition is that they are non-identical groups which are attached to the carbon atoms where well, they must lie in the same plane. If they do not lie in the same plane, well, they will not be showing geometrical isomerism. Please do remember this. You will be seeing certain examples in today's lecture where the non-identical groups, they will not be lying in the same plane and therefore the structures, they will not be showing geometrical isomerism. So this is the condition which is going to be very important for today's learning. But while what we have seen in the last lecture was the cis isomer and the trans isomer, we had the carbon-carbon double bond. And carbon-carbon double bond, if on the same side we have same type of atoms, well, we call it as a cis structure. And if they are on opposite side of the carbon-carbon double bond, we call it as the trans isomer. So this is what you have learned previously. And we have again back the model also, you can see. Now these are red balls and blue balls. We have the blacks to be the carbon-carbon. You can see that there is a double bond present. Each carbon is attached to two different groups, red and a blue, red and a blue. Let it be a X and a Y, a X and a Y, right? If the two Xs are on the same side of the double bond, we call it as a cis structure. And if they are on the opposite side, well, to make it the opposite side, we have to break the bonds and make new bonds. And that is why they are two separate structures, right? So now you can see that the 
across the double bond we have a, a red ball and a down we have a red ball so they are on opposite side of the double ball so this is a trans structure a trans and a cis both of them they are not easily converted convertible into one another we have to make new bonds we have to break old bonds well therefore they are separate individual structures and this is what we call as geometrical isomerism now the next thing which i want you people to understand is how we represent geometrical isomerism on paper now why is it so special it is because we are talking about stereo isomerism we are talking about the spatial arrangement of atoms and their are arrangement is a three dimensional arrangement and we are showing that on a two dimensional piece of paper so that is very important for you people to understand and read the structures on paper fine so now what you can see in this diagram is we have a cis isomer and a trans isomer and we have the model for this also so if you compare the trans isomer this is my x this is my y this is my y this is my x so you can compare it with the diagram also right so i hope this is clear so this is the x this is the y this is above the double bond this y is above the double bond this y is below and this x is below clear now you look at this diagram this is also the diagrams that you have seen in the previous lecture here now you can see in the representation the x and the y is well they are making a bond with the carbons but we are representing it in a different way and the representation is the y is attached to the carbon by this solid triangle and this x is joined to the carbon by this dotted triangle now what are these well we call this solid triangle to be a wedge and the dotted triangle to be the dash wedge and dash representation of organic molecules right so now what do these means well the groups that point towards us they are denoted by a dark solid line that is the wedge and the groups that point away from us they will be denoted by a dash line so what this means is now these y's they are coming towards us then the x's they are going backwards in the cis structure i will be talking about the trans because i have the model for the trans first of all so let us see that so here now you can see you have a y and a x coming towards us and a x and a y going backwards right so if you look at this now what you can see is right so you can see that we have a x and a y coming towards and one y and one x coming backwards so this is represented which is coming forward is represented by the wedge and which is coming backward that is represented by the dash all right so this is how we represent the organic molecules and this is going to be very important in stereo isomerism that you understand what is a wedge what is a dash the wedges they are telling us about the groups that are pointing towards us and the dash this is pointing the groups that are coming towards us all right i hope this is clear all right so now if you've understood everything that we have learned in the previous lecture and revised in this lecture as well well you will be able to have a clear understanding of geometrical isomerism in cyclic compounds that we are going to learn today so we will be chiefly talking about cycloalkanes cycloalkenes biphenyl spiro compounds and along with that we will be talking about alenes as well where there are going to be straight compounds but we will be having consecutive double bonds there so we are going to talk about all this now first of all let us understand why did we talk about geometrical isomerism why did we think about geometrical isomerism in cyclic compounds so well if you remember that a short while ago we had a lecture on double bond equivalent there what did we say we said one double bond this is equivalent to a ring right and this is what helped us draw all the possible structural isomers for a particular molecular formula fine now if you've not watched that lecture you have just joined us for geometrical isomerism well please do watch that lecture as well that is going to be very helpful to you for drawing all the structural isomers for a particular molecular formula so there in that lecture we had understood that one double bond or one pi bond this is equivalent to a ring 
So for a double bond, if we can draw geometrical isomers, this means that we will be able to draw geometrical isomers for cyclic compound also for a ring also because they both are equivalent, right? So with this understanding in mind, well, let us see whether geometrical isomerism is possible in cyclic compounds or not. Now, what we have learned is that for a uh, structure to show geometrical isomerism, we need restricted rotation. So the substituents, they are going to be cis and trans if they are locked in place. If the structure that we have, it has some restriction. So pi bond, there was one way to lock the substituents in a place. And that is why we had the substituents showing cis and trans structures. Now the rings, they are going to be one more way where we can lock the substituents in a particular space. What this means is that rings, they are also going to be one way of restricted rotation. Now, if you see this structure over here, well, you can see that we have three blacks, right? So these blacks are the carbons, the whites, they are the hydrogens, and you can see now the blue ones also. So blue ones, let us assume these to be now the methyl groups. We have seen a lot of chlorine green atoms, fine. So these are the methyl groups, all right. Now what we are saying is that carbon-carbon double bond, you saw that there was a restricted rotation. Now if you try to rotate this, this is a sigma bond between the two carbons. But what is problem over here is that when we try to rotate this carbon, right, holding this carbon in place, we are trying to rotate it. Well, the next carbon, this is not allowing it to rotate. Right, so this is also having a restricted rotation being in a ring. This next carbon in the ring, this is not allowing it to rotate. So we have a restricted rotation. So it is going to be possible to see geometrical isomerism in cyclic compounds as well. So the ring structures or the cyclic compounds, they can also exhibit cis and trans isomerism without even the presence of a pi bond. So pi bond is not going to be essential for the ring structure to show cis trans isomerism, right? I hope this is clear. So now let us see this structure, one, two, dimethyl cyclopropane a bit more in detail. So this is the model that I was showing you, fine? So here we have cyclopropane because carbon number one, carbon number two, and carbon number three attached in a ring, so cyclopropane. We have one methyl group at position number one. We have the second methyl group at position number two. So this is going to be one methyl, and 2 methyl. So 1, 2 dimethyl cyclopropane. So if you now compare the structure with this one, so I will just have to orient it in such a way that you can see exactly the same thing. So now if you see the structure, what you can see is, just a moment, okay. So what you can see over here is that we have this atom you can see clearly, this one you can see clearly. So here you can see a hydrogen on top and a methyl group below. So similarly, what you can see in the diagram also, right? So in the diagram also, you can see that this was the ring on the equatorial plane and we have a hydrogen on top and we have a methyl group below. And similar to this, we have a hydrogen on top and a methyl group below. So this is going to be cis 1 to dimethyl cyclopropane. Fine. And I'll just uh, show you the diagrammatic representation of the trans structure also. And then we will see that on the model. Fine. So we have now one methyl group on top and a hydrogen on top and a hydrogen and methyl group below and they are diagonally opposite to each other. So this is a trans structure. Had we two methyl groups at the same position? Well, for one carbon, we will be having same groups on that carbon. So that structure will not show geometrical isomerism. We have to have the condition of two different groups on the carbon. Restricted rotation plus two different groups on the carbon that is essential for geometrical isomerism. Right? So here now you can see back again. So you can see the two Methyl groups pointing downwards and the two hydrogens pointing upwards. So this is cis structure. And now if I want to convert this into a trans structure, free rotation is not possible, right? So what I have to make is break the bonds, make the new bonds, and then I will be able to see another spatial arrangement. This structure is also 1,2-dimethyl cyclopropane. We have one methyl group on one carbon, one methyl group on the other carbon. But now, 
we can see a different spatial arrangement. One methyl and one hydrogen going up and one methyl and one hydrogen going below. Right? So, this is a trans structure. All right. Now, this is we can have another representation also for this, and that is a representation with the wedges and dash. So, this over here, what you can see is that we have the dashes for two methyl groups. So, what this means is that these two groups they are pointing backwards, right? So, they are coming towards me not pointing towards you whereas over here in this trans structure what you can see is we have a solid wedge and a dash for the two methyl groups so what this means is that this methyl group this is pointing towards you and this methyl group this is pointing towards me fine so if you look back now this is the representation well let us make it the way it is going to be in the diagram also so you will be able to see it fine so now can you see that there is one methyl group that is pointing towards you and there is one methyl group that is not pointing towards you. This is coming towards me. Fine. So this is going to be a trans structure. And when again I break the bonds and I make the new ones, I can have a different spatial arrangement. And in that spatial arrangement now, According to the diagram, what you can see is that these two, they are pointing backwards, right? So these are pointing backwards. Now you cannot see them very well. If I just rotate it in this way slightly, you can see that they are coming backwards. The hydrogens, they are coming towards you. Fine. So this is a cis structure. And if I just rotate it also, what you will be seeing is now these two, they are pointing towards you and the hydrogens, they are coming towards me. So this is also just the other way of drawing the cis structure. Fine. I hope this is clear. So now this is the representation that you saw for a trans structure. One wedge and one dash. Right. So these are for the two methyl groups. But now we can also have an understanding where are the hydrogens with the representation on the paper also. So let us do that learning also. This is very important for you people. Why? Putting a lot of time over here is because all this is going to be discussed in stereo isomerism again and again. Once learned is going to be very beneficial for you. We are just going to spend some time today over here. Fine. So what you can see in this diagram over here with this model, we are going to see the same things that carbon number one, which you can see in the diagram is this. We have a methyl group going up. All right. So you can see in the diagram also that we have a methyl group going up and for that there is a hydrogen attached which you can see that in the diagram is a line going slightly down. So this is the hydrogen which is going down. The next you can see carbon number two in the diagram. Just keep on relating it with the diagram. So I'm just shifting now the focus on carbon number two. This is carbon number two. The hydrogen is going up and the methyl group this is going down right so this is carbon number two and then you have carbon number three here you can see that we have a hydrogen going up and a hydrogen going down right so what we have done over here let us see now so this all you can see that we have go in the line going up right so the line going up shows that this is the equatorial plane for the cyclopropane and the substituent which is going above that is above the plane and the line which is bending downwards this is below the plane right so a ch3 up a hydrogen up and a hydrogen up a hydrogen this is bent downwards a methyl group is bent downwards and this hydrogen is downwards so this is the three groups the methyl a hydrogen and a hydrogen going up and a hydrogen a hydrogen and a, a sorry a methyl group and a hydrogen going down all right so just look back again so you can see over here that we have a methyl group going on top a hydrogen going on top and a hydrogen going on top a methyl group going down and two hydrogens along with that going down so this is one way of representation and the other is going to be this is the eye of the observer that has been showing this and then the other way is when we show this it with the wedge and the dash so the wedge is going to be pointing towards you and the dash is going away from you so again now just the angle is going to be a bit different okay so what you can see for this now is that if we keep it this way fine so when we are keeping it this way what you can see is this methyl group is coming towards you the hydrogen coming towards you hydrogen coming towards you 
all right and the backwards there is a hydrogen a hydrogen and a methyl group that is coming backwards okay so this is the structure that you can see all right so the different i hope now it is clear and what we have drawn in the short form is that we are just talking about the methyl groups one methyl group coming outwards and one methyl group coming backwards at position number 1 and 2 so this is the representation in short because this helps keep the structure less messy fine so these are all equivalent structures and this is meaning that this is a trans structure and when we have two methyl groups pointing upwards now this is going to be a cis structure right so a cis structure and a trans structure all right i hope this is clear all right so i hope now the concept this is clear to you and i'm going to give you everything in writing so that once you have the notes made with you and while you are revising the concepts also just reading those notes also you are able to understand what all you had to seen before right so we are going to write this down everything what we have learned and what we have learned is that in case of the cyclic compounds we do have carbon carbon single bonds but the free single bond rotation is restricted because of the presence of a ring and due to the hindered rotation of the atoms around the carbon carbon single bond the closed chain compounds they do show cis and trans isomerism right and the carbon ring of the cyclo alkanes this forms a pseudo plane and the pseudo plane this is used to assign the relative orientation of the atoms or the substituents bonded to the ring so if you look at this structure the ring of the cyclopropane this is going to form one plane all right so this is a plane and this plane we are using to assign the relative orientation of the atoms if now we have the orientation up the ring we will be seeing one thing up and the other going down so one side of the ring we will be calling it as up and the other side we will be calling it as down for the cis isomer both the substituents they are above or below the carbon ring as you can see the hydrogens they are above and the methyl groups they are below and for the trans isomer one substituent is going to be above the ring while the other substituent is going to be below the ring so one methyl group is above and the other methyl group is below one hydrogen is above and one hydrogen is below so this is the trans structure and this is the cis structure and the chemists they also use heavy wedge shaped bonds to indicate a substituent located above the average plane of the ring which is going to be up and a hatched line for the bonds to atoms or groups related below the ring so it is going to be a wedge and a dash wedge for above and a dash for below or you can say a wedge for something that is pointing towards you and a dash for something pointing backwards all right i hope this is clear very nice so let us see some more examples in cycloalkanes for example in front of you we have is a four membered ring so this is cyclobutene position number 1 and position number 3 we have a methyl group so this is 1,3 dimethyl cyclobutene but along with that what is given to us is that this is a solid wedge this is also a solid wedge so both of the methyl groups they are you can say either above the plane of the ring or you can say these are coming towards you and what would be happening to the hydrogens which are at this position so the hydrogens would be going back here also the hydrogen would be going back or this is hydrogen would be coming down if i represent it well so we will be having a hydrogen over here and we will be having a hydrogen over here all right so what this means that both the hydrogens they will be down and both the methyl groups they will be above the plane of the ring so we can say that this is going to be a cis structure right i hope this is clear now as far as the trans structure is concerned so you can see one is being represented by a solid wedge and the other is a dash so both of them they are opposite to each other one is above the plane and one is below the plane so this is going to be trans 1,3 dimethyl cyclobutane the next structure this is cyclopentane 
and in cyclopentane at position number one and position number two we have a methyl group and both of these now you can see that they are in the same plane they are below the plane of the ring of cyclopentane right so methyl group is below and the hydrogens they are above or you can say that the methyl groups they are above and the hydrogens they are below both of these structures they will be cis 1 to dimethyl cyclobutane and for the trans structures if a hydrogen uh, this hydrogen is above with a methyl group and here we have a methyl group and hydrogen below so these are going to be diagonally opposite to each other one above the plane the other below the plane so this is going to be a trans structure or you can have it the opposite way as well so this is going to be trans 1 to dimethyl cyclopentane the next structure we have a six membered ring so this is going to be cyclohexane we have two methyl groups so one two dimethyl cyclohexane again you can see that here what do we have these are the dashes right so dash means they are going behind the plane or they are below the plane of the ring whatever orientation we can take so if we are saying that these are going back these are coming forward if we are saying that these are going down the plane of the ring these are coming up all right so up and down backward and forward so this is going to be cis 1 to dimethyl cyclohexane and the trans structures one is going to be going backwards and the other is coming forward towards you and here you can see that this is going forward and this is coming backward or this is below the plane of the ring this is above the plane of the ring this is above the plane of the ring this is below the plane of the ring so they are not in the same all right so I hope now this is also clear to you people fine so this is some examples let us see some more so the next example that you can see is of cis 1 to cyclopentane diol or you can also write this as cis cyclopentane 1 to diol right why you can say this because we have a carbon number 1 carbon number 2 the two OH groups so this is going to be the functional group you are going to have it as a all so this is going to be a diol at position number 1 and 2. You can put it forward or you can put it after pentane it is going to be equally correct so cis 1 to cyclopentane diol so here you can see that we have the two hydrogens above the plane of the ring and the two oh groups below the plane of the ring so this is going to be a cis structure and when we have them one above the plane and one below the plane of the ring we will be calling it as trans 1 to cyclopentane diol similarly this is cyclobutane and we have two COOH groups. So this is going to be a dicarboxylic acid, right? So this is cis cyclobutane 1, 3 dicarboxylic acid because both of the groups you can see they are below the plane of the ring. And if one is above and one is below, it is going to be trans cyclobutane 1, 3 dicarboxylic acid. All right, I hope this is clear. Now there is one more representation which I would like you to all see and this is this one right so this is what membered ring this is a five membered ring so this is pentane now in pentane you can see the hydrogens we are showing again by the dash and the bromines by a wedge so this is essentially as far as the name is concerned this is going to be one two di bromocyclopentane and because the two bromines you can see they are being represented by the solid wedge say so they are going to be above the plane all right or they are coming towards you and the hydrogens they are going backwards or they are going to be below so this is going to be a cis structure all right and the other one you can see this is when we are having one hydrogen by a dash and the other by a wedge this is going to be a trans structure so i hope now you can very easily identify it now see this diagram over here so what is this diagram telling us this is a solid wedge so dark bold line and the other ones this is a thin line so this dark line this is coming towards us and this is back line so this is a uh, lighter for example it is very easy to understand that when you're drawing a painting the something that is closer you, to you you draw that in bold dark colors and something far away you just draw it with faint lines if you have to draw some mountains which are very close to you you will be drawing it with the bold lines and the mountains which are far away which you cannot see if you are drawing very well you will be able to understand this you draw that with faint lines so that is exactly the same thing we have this to be a bold line so this is coming towards us this is nearer to us and these they are farther away from us so carbon number three this the height is uh, the 
coldness is increasing so this carbon and this carbon this is directly in front of us this has started going back and now this carbon is very back away from us so and then we can see now this bromine this is going up this bromine bond going up so this is going to be same direction so this is going to be cis so cis 1 to dibromocyclopentane and here the bromine one is going down and the other is going up so this is going to be a trans structure all right so the various representations i am teaching you so that you have a better understanding and you do not get confused all of these they are meaning essentially the same thing okay perfectly fine all right so now what do we have what have we learned in this whole discussion is that while the carbon carbon single bonds of the ring they can rotate partially there is no way to interconvert between the cis and the trans structure we have to break the bonds we have to make new bonds so as to convert a cis structure into a trans structure so the cis and the trans isomers they are unique compounds with their own unique melting points boiling points dead space etc so they are going to be different compounds with the same molecular formula same structural formula different spatial arrangement of atom and different properties so now i hope this geometrical isomerism in cycloalkanes this is clear to you now in all the examples that we have seen so far what we saw was that we had a cyclic ring of carbons and two of the carbons they were having different substituents and that is where geometrical isomerism was seen now supposedly if we have a structure where more than two carbons of the ring they have different substituents then in that case what are we going to do what is going to be the stereochemistrical notation for that is it going to be a cis structure or is it going to be a trans structure well now this is going to be very complex why is it going to be complex let us understand this with the help of an example we will be taking a tri substituted cyclohexane as you can see in the diagram we have a six carbon ring so it is going to be cyclohexane and then we have three substituents one is a methyl group one is an ethyl group and one is a chloro group all right now what you can see is when what are you going to give the name to this compound you have to arrange them alphabetically and chloro will come before all the two uh, the rest of the two and then it will be ethyl and then it will be methyl so it is going to be 1 chloro 3 ethyl 5 methyl cyclohexane now let us look at the model of this and then we will be able to understand the things better fine so you have this as a six member ring all right now in this six member ring you can see that we have a red ball a blue ball and a green ball let us assume that the blue ball this is the methyl group the red ball this is the ethyl group and the green ball this is a chloro all right so now what you can see is if i put this in this one plane you can see well this way fine so you can see now the red and the blue ball they are above the ring and the green ball this is below so what is going to be the relationship between the methyl group and the ethyl group? both are above the plane so this means they are going to be cis to each other and what about the methyl and the chloro well one is above and one is below so this means that this is going to be trans right now if we look at the ethyl group so ethyl and methyl they were cis and ethyl and chloro they are going to be trans so in one structure we are having a cis also and we are having a trans also so how are we going to call it is it a cis structure it is a trans structure so the naming is going to be complex so we cannot designate the entire molecule as a cis or a trans isomer we can only talk about the relationship of the two substituents the ethyl and the methyl they are cis the methyl and the chloro they are trans so we will be able to talk about only two substituents then we have more than two carbons of the ring having different substituents all right i hope this is also clear great the next let us now discuss geometrical isomerism in cyclic alkenes where at least there should be one double bond present in the ring so here let us again take one example from a model first of all so you can see this is a six member ring if all of these they are single bonds it would be a cyclohexane but here now you can see that one of the bonds well i have taken this to be a double bond all right so here you can see that this is a double bond so this is going to be cyclohexane and now in the cyclohexane across the double bond you can see these red balls now i am assuming these red balls to be fluorine all right 
so we can match the structure with this diagram over here that we have a double bond right and we have two fluorine atoms all right so you can see the structure this is this one to difluorocyclohexene now how do we know that this is showing geometrical isomerism or not so let us look at the conditions we need a carbon carbon double bond we have a carbon carbon double bond if you look at this carbon of the carbon carbon double bond this is attached to two different groups one is a fluorine and the other is a carbon similarly this one also this is having one fluorine and the other is going to be a carbon all right so this means that the two carbons of the carbon carbon double bond they are attached to different substituents so this can this portion this can show geometrical isomerism right and then if we draw the trans structure for this what are we going to do well we want one fluorine this side and the other fluorine should go into the ring then only it will be showing the trans structure so the diagrammatic representation you can see all right so this is going to be the diagram for this and you can see how twisted the ring has become so actually what happens is that when i try to make a trans structure in the model well i cannot make it possible it is not possible even if i break this bond so you are going to tell me that ma'am we have to break the bonds to make a cis structure into a trans structure but even if i try to break my bonds and i change the position right so this is going to be well if i just put this so this is how they are going to be when it is going to be a trans structure but when i'm going to join back my carbons when it is going to be very difficult job all right uh well i actually tried it quite many times and i could not make a proper structure there was so much of twisting that i kept on breaking the bonds so actually this is not possible fine so what we come to know from this conclusion that man could not draw the uh, could not make the trans model for the structure is that contrary to the open chain alkenes the cis cycloalkenes they are generally more stable than the trans isomers because of strong twisting of the trans ring so because the ring gets twisted so much that i could not make a model for the trans of cyclohexene all right so one two difluorocyclohexene i could not draw this uh, make the model for the trans structure the cis we have already seen so uh, because of the resulting high ring strain small trans cycloalkenes they have not been observed actually so we do not see the trans forms for the tra uh, cycloalkenes which are of a smaller ring size and the cis isomers also they also show a considerable ring strain but we can still see them as you can see over here and we have seen the model as well but the trans structure this is not existing all right so now i hope this is clear so what we see is that up till the ring size of 7 7 carbon ring and below that they are all going to have only cis structures they will be not having trans structures all right so you can just say this structure to be one to difluorocyclohexene because only this is going to be existing the trans structure will not be existing this is very important for you people to remember up till the ring size of 7 we will only be having cyclic alkenes as cis structures all right now what happens when we have rings great 8 or greater than 8 let us see that so now let me show you the model for a, a sick eight membered ring so in this eight membered ring can you see that we have this to be the double bond all right so the double bond i hope you can all see and if i just change the position now you can see that one of the uh, red balls is going up and the other is coming down so they are not on the same side of the double bond so this is a trans structure for eight carbon ring now you can see a trans structure obviously we can make the cis one that is anyways easy so i've made the trans one for you so that you can remember till seven ma'am cannot make the model but after seven from eight onwards we can make the trans model also and in fact what you will see is that if we start making have 11 members ring then the trans structures they become in fact more stable than the cis ones also all right so now for example i have over here in the diagram cis 1 to dibromo cyclooctane so here this is going to be the cis structure and the trans structure is going to be something like this 
all right so this is trans 1 2 dipomo cyclo octene you will not have to make these diagrams in your examination this is high level uh, study that we are doing over here so what you have to just remember is that up till seven member ring you will not be having the trans structures and beyond seven eight onwards we will be having the trans cyclic alkenes also possible so gi is going to be possible after eight members right so to form a trans isomer the cycloalkene ring this must contain at least eight carbons the energy difference between the cis and trans cyclooctene is approximately 38.5 kJ per mole eventually what we see is that the trans isomers they become more stable than the cis isomers once the ring contains more than 11 carbons so this is what you have to remember fine i hope this is clear so next let us see geometrical isomerism in alenes so what are alenes well alenes are going to be those structures where we will be seeing that consecutive carbon carbon bonds they are double bonds all right so for example if you look at this structure this is carbon number 1 carbon number 2 and carbon number 3 so you can see two consecutive double bonds between the three carbons so such a structure this is called as an alene now does this structure show geometrical isomerism what you can see is that we have a double bond a restricted rotation and then we have two groups which are different to from one another which are attached to this carbon and to this carbon also we have a r1 and r2 and because they are not equal to one another so this means that well we have different groups attached to this carbon and to this carbon so we should uh, have the structure showing geometrical isomerism but what happens in actual practice well we see that this structure is not going to show geometrical isomerism do you want to know why well it is because these two bonds they are in a different plane all right so you can see over here that if one of this plane is a yz plane the other is a xy plane both these substituents they will be present in a different plane and one of the rules for geometrical isomerism the condition for geometrical isomerism say that the substituents they have to be in one plane only when they will be able to show geometrical isomerism now why is it this a different plane let us understand this so i will be able to show you the diagrams only for this i will not be able to show the models it's going to be very difficult for me to show that hybridization and all all right so we have this carbon carbon and carbon a double bond a double bond a double bond if we talk about carbon number 1 this is going to make one sigma bond with the adjacent carbon and two sigma bonds with hydrogens all right let it be hydrogens for the time being these are not different they have to be different if it has to show geometrical isomerism all right if we assume now let us assume that these are different groups also it is a r1 and a r2 so what you will be seeing is that this carbon will, will be making three sigma bonds and three sigma bonds means it is going to be sp2 hybridized and one of the orbitals is going to be unhybridized all right then we move on to the next carbon so the next carbon is making a double bond with this all right so one of the orbitals is going to be unhybridized that is why it is making a pi bond with it all right so these two they are overlapping with each other to form the pi bond if you look at this carbon this is also going to be sp2 hybridized it is also making three sigma bonds but the center carbon because this is making two pi bonds it will be making just two sigma bonds and it is going to be sp hybridized so it has two unhybridized orbital and when it has two unhybridized orbitals well these two they are going to be 90 degree to each other all right i hope this is all clear to you you all have an understanding that this is the equatorial plane so if this is the z axis this is going to be the x axis this is going to be the y axis they are all perpendicular to one another and now when this one is going to overlap with the unhybridized orbital of the next carbon well it is going to be at 90 degree to the plane of these two orbitals all right i hope this is clear this is a different direction and this is a different direction for the pi bond so the pi bonds formed as a result of the overlap of the p orbitals they must be at right angles to each other so that the pi bond is formed right so what we can see now is that not only the two pi bonds they are perpendicular to one another in fact the two methylene groups the ch2 ch2 groups 
they are perpendicular to each other this is in one plane and this is in another plane and that is why you can see those different planes over here and when they are in a different plane well they will not be able to show geometrical isomerism all right so when we have two adjacent double bonds the structures they are not going to show geometrical isomerism this is very important i have made a model which is not a very accurate one but you can just understand this that we have this carbon making two double bonds but these are not lying in one straight line these are at an angle to one another all right so these are going to be not in a straight line they are not in the same plane so that is why the structure this cannot show geometrical isomerism all right but supposedly if i have three consecutive double bonds okay if i have a structure like this and i have a hydrogen here and a ch3 here so this is two different groups for this carbon and well i make another carbon okay so this is a hydrogen here and this is a ch3 over here so first this one over here this was in the yz plane all right and then this one this turned out to be in the xy plane and then this one this will again go black in the yz plane so now these two they are in the same plane so the atoms which are the substituents you can see them as the cis and the trans forms again okay so when we have two double bonds or you can say an even number of consecutive double bonds those structures will not be showing gi but if we have an odd number for them well they will be able to show geometrical isomerism because then we will be having the two structures to be in the same plane all right please do remember this this is going to be very important for you all right so we have two double bonds consecutive no gi in nle but if it is going to be three double bonds well it is going to be gi be possible because then those structures they are in the same plane perfectly fine great so the next we have geometrical isomerism in spirocyclic compounds now what are spirocyclic compounds these are going to be those cyclic compounds where we will be having the two rings having one carbon common so you can see this point this is one carbon common to both the rings so such structures they are spirocyclic structures right i hope this is clear now what you can see is at this end we have a carbon which is having two different groups a methyl group and a hydrogen and this carbon also having a methyl group and a hydrogen again what we think while just seeing the structure diagrammatically is that this pyrocyclic compound this should show geometrical isomerism but just like alenes we also have these to be in different planes one ring is supposedly in the yz plane the other ring is going to be in the xy plane and therefore this compound this will not show geometrical isomerism so two rings pyro compounds they are not going to show geometrical isomerism and for this i have even made the model for you so what you can see is that this is my ring number 1 and this is my ring number 2 ring number 1 ring number 2 on the terminal carbons what you can see is that i have different groups all right so you can see the this one a red and a blue ball and here also a red and a blue ball but if you see diagrammatically you think that it should show gi but actually what you see is that these two rings they are in a different plane therefore it is not going to show geometrical isomerism but when we move on again to the three ring structure right just like we had the three uh, carbon carbon double bonds so here also the planes they will become the same first we have a xy plane the last will be again a xy plane and in between we will be having a yz plane so now both of these terminal carbons they are having the substituents in the same plane all right so this is also a xy plane this is also a xy plane the ch3 group on top of the ring this is above the ring so this is going to be a cis structure and if this was methyl group at a lower position it would have been a trans structure all right i hope this is clear so a three ring spiro compound is showing gi whereas a two ring spiro compound this does not show gi so what do you have to remember even ring spiro compounds no geometrical isomerism in uh, seen whereas for the odd ring spiro compounds geometrical isomerism will be seen similarly you can take it for the alenes as well even 
double bond alleles they will not be showing geometrical isomerism whereas odd double bonds for the alleles they will be showing gi all right i hope this is clear so now we are just left with the biphenyl so let us quickly do that as well so after the whole big discussion today we reach up to the last topic for today that is going to be geometrical isomerism in biphenyls lot of learning and interesting learning today isn't it so what are first of all biphenyls well biphenyls are going to be those structures when we have two benzene rings joined to one another by a sigma bond so if you look at this position this is going to be one phenyl group this is the other phenyl group joined to each other this becomes a biphenyl all right so now do we see geometrical isomerism in this biphenyl well you will be again thinking like we had for this pyrocyclic compounds we had for the alenes now these two rings also they are going to be in different planes no actually not both of these rings they are in the same plane all right so if this is xy plane both of the rings they are in the xy plane all right but here what the problem is that we have a sigma bond joining the two phenyl rings and free rotation is going to be possible and when we have a free rotation possible all right so if you take hold of one ring and you try to move the other ring well this is going to be possible and therefore because free rotation is possible the first condition for geometrical isomerism this is not done there should be a restricted rotation so what we see is that for this biphenyl there is not going to be any geometrical isomerism all right now the next we move on to when this biphenyls they are substituted so if you look over here we have four ortho positions for this structure right so this is our carbon this position for this a uh, ring and the other position for this these are the ortho positions for ring 1 and these are the ortho positions for ring 2 if i do a substitution over here for example over here i have done a no2 and a no2 and here i have done a br and a br okay now this is in the same plane right so this is also the xy plane this is also the xy plane here you can see that the two no2 groups they are Uh, next to each other right and the brs they are next to each other so we can assume that this to be a cis structure and if i put a no2 and a br opposite each other we reverse the positions of this right so we will be having a no2 and a br together a br and a no2 so that would become a trans structure a cis and a trans when you look at the structure on the piece of paper it is asked to you in the question whether this structure is going to show geometrical isomerism or not so this is a ring structure when you do have a uh, inclination to say that yes this is going to be no2 no2 together so this is cis and when they will be opposite one another it is going to be a trans all right but here what you have to remember is that this is also not going to show geometrical isomerism this is in a xy plane this is also in a xy plane but what happens is when these two groups they come together these are bulky groups they show a steric hindrance right so actually what happens is when they come close to one another they create repulsion for each other all right so they repel each other and to minimize that repulsion what happens is that the phenyl ring this becomes distorted and it orients itself perpendicular to each other all right so we have one phenyl ring and one other phenyl ring getting perpendicular to each other so as to minimize repulsions so what you can see over here is now we have this one phenyl ring and now the other phenyl ring this has moved into the perpendicular plane so if this was the xy plane the other is a yz plane now both of them they are in a different plane all right here now free rotation is not going to be possible because now the no2 groups they are not allowing the ring to move all right because if it is going to move the repulsions will again increase so now they are locked into their position they are locked into the position free rotation is not possible but what has happened now the groups they are in different plane 
So now again, what you will be seeing is that geometrical isomerism is not going to be possible, right? So the phenyl rings, they orient perpendicular to each other, hindering the rotation. Free rotation is not possible, but now the groups, they are in a different plane. So again, we have one of the conditions of geometrical isomerism being violated. Here you could see that a free rotation was possible. Here a free rotation is not possible, but now the groups, they are in a different plane. So for any of the criteria, uh, any of the structures, either it is a biphenyl itself or it is a substituted biphenyl, well, you will not be able to see geometrical isomerism, right? So GI is not going to be possible for the biphenyls. All right. I hope this is clear to you people. All right. So let us conclude the lecture, what all we have discussed today, very important discussion it was. First of all, we discussed about the cycloalkanes. So the cycloalkanes, they are having the members of the ring being sp hybridized and there is going to be a restricted rotation because of the ring structure. And if we have the carbons having different substituents, they will be showing geometrical isomerism. Next, we have cycloalkanes. So they will be showing a GI only if they are going to be 8 or above 8 membered rings. Below that, we will be seeing only the cis structures, the trans structures, they are not going to be possible. The next we have the alleles. So alleles, they do not show GI. Just please do remember, when I am saying an allele, it is going to be two adjacent double bonds. When it is going to be three double bonds that I showed you in the lecture, well, that structures, they are called as cumulates. They are not called as alleles. That is analogous to an allele. It is a cumulate where we will be having three double bonds or four double bonds that will be called as a cumulate. Okay. And if I am just simply saying it is an allele, then it is going to be just two adjacent carbon-carbon double bonds. And there you have seen that there is going to be no geometrical isomerism. All right. The next we discussed about the spiro compounds. So if these are going to be even rings, there will be no GI. But if they are going to be odd rings, they will be showing GI. And for the biphenyls, we will not be having any geometrical isomerism. I hope everything today is clear to you. So please do let me know that you have understood well. I have tried my level best. I have made so much of models for you people so that you have a thorough understanding. So that would be the end of this lecture. I hope you have enjoyed the learning today. And in the next lecture, we are going to see some questions based on geometrical isomerism. There we will be learning very importantly about the number of possible geometrical isomers for a compound. So if your compound is given to you, first of all, you have to identify whether it is going to show geometrical isomerism or not. And then we have to tell how many geometrical isomers they are possible for that structure. So it is going to be again a very important concept for you to learn for your examination. So see you again for the next lecture. Have a nice day. God bless you. Bye-bye.